go. Here we go, here we go. Hi guys, and welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Let's just cut right to the chase. This report is coming out on July 26, 2024. Let me just start by telling you, I'm giving you news, whether it's good news or bad news. And for me, I didn't get to fish very much in the last 10 days. I think it's been 10 days since my last report. And the fishing I did do was very, <laughs> you hear my voice crack, very unproductive. So let me just go right on into it. The big water fly fishing report for Texas, that's big fresh water. It's calming down in a more typical pattern for this time of year. Lakes have been stabilized by the drawdown and uh, the rain switch has been flipped to the off position. Uh, the lakes are, were aggressively drawn down and now that's calming. They've kind of dialed it down just a little bit. Unfortunately, conservation of Texas freshwater and enhancement of the river fisheries, enhancement, hard word, of the river fisheries uh, is virtually non-existent here in Texas, except for one place in the whole state, and that would be the Guadalupe River. So, you know that's close to Austin, and that's why that happens. If you live in the state of Texas, you know that we are a reactive and not a proactive state when it comes to water conservation and recreational uh, river activities. My visits to two dam spillways this past week yielded only one thing, a lot of watching and no fly fishing. So it was really, really rough. The first dam spillway I saw no action at was Denison Dam, which is overrun in combat style anglers. We're talking a lot of people there. The kind of epic release needed to restock the Red River below PK hasn't happened again. Um, those epic releases are not generation releases, they are actually flood releases, and we have not had one in a while. So the result is, with a hundred fishermen there like there was the other day, um, it gets picked over really quickly and all, it doesn't matter what size they are, these folks take every single fish they catch out of there. And so the striper action you would normally find there is non-existent. Second place I went, Lila, Lela, whatever you want to call it, Louisville Lake Environmental Learning Area. That is the spillway below the uh, Lake Louisville, and it's a continuation of the Elm Fork of the Trinity River, which goes through Ray Roberts. There are a few sand bass being piped in, but that's about it. For a release to stock a river below, there has to be fish near the intake when the intake is open. That's not happening. There are no fish being drawn through that pipe. It's a pipe, people. It's not a real dam type gate, okay? Gates are different than pipes. So, there's nothing happening there. And of course, I don't even bother with uh, the, uh, the water on the dam, below the dam at uh, Ray Roberts, because we know there's no fish there. I've, I've documented that many times, and you can see that in past videos. Here's a tip for you. If you're looking for a lesser known dam experience, I got one for you. This is one that you have to travel to get to. Most of you will have to travel, and most of you won't have to travel as far as I do. That would be the dam at Tawakini, below Lake Tawakini. If you go down to the spillway below there, you might get into some hybrid action and some sand bass action. Don't be surprised if everybody knows about it. Don't be surprised if it's crowded. I heard, overheard other people talking about it when I was over at Denison Dam. Texas rivers, they're still refreshing the weight and paddle. The floods, fur releases have changed the dyna dynamics in some places for sure. You can tell I haven't read this before after I wrote it. Uh, and uh, if you're going to these places that you've been before, you can expect your uh, expectations to be changed because of the changing of the dynamics of these rivers from the flooding we had earlier this year got to have some sympathy for those guides who try to make work of going uh, and guiding on Texas rivers wherever they may be. I mean, ex with the exception of the Guadalupe River, which is a drama loopy river, actually, is what they call it now. Um, you know, these other rivers really suffer under mismanagement of flows and zero management of flows, and it really shows this time of year. 
the on again off again heat is on again here to close out july so we've had a really wonderful time here in the last few days of lower 90s upper 80s for a high very unusual i think it has an effect on everything as well uh, you know if i was going to go do a, a little weight a little bit of uh, a, a action in the um, area of spillways i'd go to the dam at pk but I put out a survey on my uh, community board and you guys want me to go to PK Lake. So looks like I'm gonna have to hitch up the boat next week and go to Possum Kingdom Lake. Man, what a great name, Possum Kingdom. I mean, this is where the possums are king. Isn't it great? The bad news is all mine and it's about the lake I live close to, Lake Ray Roberts. I, I've never seen it in such a terrible position where I never ever, in 15 years I've been doing this uh, consistently, uh, of no carp on the flats at all. I mean, we're talking 0.0. .0. I mean, I've been out there multiple times with high hopes and my hopes have been dashed, and now we're looking in nooks and crannies of, of Ray Roberts trying to find out where they are. If you know, be sure to let me know where they are on Lake Ray Roberts, because I just want to say hi to my old friends before the fall comes around. Frustrating as you can imagine for me, obviously. Let's skip over now, let's go to saltwater. If you're looking for saltwater action, I've got a lot of stuff to get to here at the very end. I've got some products here you're gonna to want to see. Um, a new product I'm prototyping, but let's look at salt. There's plenty of action to be had, and the Texas coast was refreshed by Hurricane Barrel. Except for the area where it made landfall and the damage it did there, it also cleaned up and, and added some fresh water to a very salty habitat of the Texas, upper Texas Gulf Coast. Like I was telling you in the last report, the South Texas coast was virtually unaffected by surge, rain, or any of the things that when this hurricane made landfall near Houston, um, they got pounded pretty good. And there's still electricity off in Houston for some people. The Gulf hurricane season is still very young and this renewed heat coming right now will go a long way towards fueling these Gulf disturbances. You can expect there to be more, more weather out there at some point in time. You realize that the hurricane season runs all the way into October. So, and it can go into November now, I'm sure, too, because of the heat. As always, the further south you go along the Texas Gulf Coast, the better it gets. I'm looking to add anybody to report to me from the tip of Texas and on up the coast and anywhere you are in Texas. If you're a fly fisherman and you fish a lot, I would love to add you on. I can I can only get folks to, to participate who are actually doing it, of course, and those guys who aren't doing it, they don't want to participate. They might say they're doing it, but they're not. So uh, when it comes to fly fishing. So those guys can uh, enjoy themselves. Today's tip is a very, getting to the tip already, man. God, I'm going fast today. Today's tip is a very important safety tip. When you're fly fishing places like the Texas Spillways, be sure to watch your back cast. That's your tip, watch your back cast. There are people all around you who have no idea what fly fishing is, how it's done, and much less to get out of the way of your back cast. Be sure you stand at an angle that opens your body up to see what's going on when you throw out a back cast. That means cheating your left foot forward if you're right-handed or your right foot forward if you're left-handed so that you open your body up and you can turn your head. You don't have to twist your head all the way around like uh, the exorcist to, to find your back cast. You just want to see that nobody's back there out of the corner of your eye before you start your forward cast. You yank somebody <laughs> with a fly on that forward cast, it's going to hurt them pretty good. Uh, this happens to me all on the jetties and at these spillways all the time. People that have no clue and they walk around behind me and uh, I have, what I do is if I'm like this, I just let it drop, just let it all out, let it drop and the line lands and everybody's okay and we live to cast another day. So that's how that works. But it's just another variable and it's one that you should be doing anyway if you really care about your cast in, in its entirety is you need to see the back cast a lot of times or at least part of the time so that 
you can be sure that everything's unfolding nicely and coming back forward after it's completely unwrapped and go forward. So that's, that's my tip for that. Do I have anything else? Oh yeah, I got more. I got more. Believe me, I got more. So you guys are aware, these are my fly line mats. I've been selling these from coast to coast and three continents now. Um, if you need one, you know where to find it. It's uh, I'll put a link down there anyway to the uh, my website, texasflycaster.com. You can go there and purchase these. Lots of colors, still very affordable. Price hasn't gone up in a couple of years. It probably won't go up for a couple more years. Guess what though? I'm prototyping a new product and it's for you guys that have these expensive pliers. I have a pair of premium uh, pliers that I really like by Danco and they came with a leather leather kind of holster thing you know a leather a leather sheath and it's taking a beating on salt water and fresh water and it just it gets beat down really quickly so my prototype goes from this kydex flat pieces of kydex to this right here so this is a and i'm still working going to cut it out and everything but this is a kydex sheath holster whatever you want to call it scabbard for your good pliers. So these are all taped off because I don't want to mess up the, the uh, titanium on them. Uh, and I don't think it would anyway, but anyway, they tell you to tape it off. So I'm still learning this process. I'm doing these prototypes. If you have a pair of the 5.5 inch Danco Premios, I need a few people to actually work, have these prototypes to try them out. You need to contact me, send me a picture of yourself with your pliers the 5.5 Danco Premios and I will send you one of these based on my actual uh, pair of pliers molded off of that to try out for no charge no cost or anything so I've got I probably need to send out two or three of those in the next month uh, like in August and so if you would like to try for free and have for yourself a pair a pair <laughs> a scabbard a holster a, uh, a uh, sheath, whatever you want to call it, custom made for your Danco 5.5 Premios. All you have to do is send me a picture of you with them, send it by email, texasflycaster gmail.com, and I will make one for you. And it's going to be this color because it's a, it's a prototype. And it'll be this, this color, and this will be bent over with backwards with a, a loop on it for belts, up to two inch wide belts, which are the Sims belts for waiting. And it'll have all brass eyelets on it so they won't rust or anything like that. And this should be a really good addition to uh, your pliers uh, to help them, you know, keep everything safe and also get rid of the leather. Leather and water generally don't mix very well. This is a high quality uh, deal right here because it's Danco's are very expensive. The premiums are very expensive to begin with, but this should be a real upgrade. TexasFlyCasterGmail.com. I can do about three or four of these to send out, and I've already got two being sent out, so that'll get me up to about five or six of these. We're going to put these through field tests. You guys are going to help me out. Let me know what your feedback is on this and uh, I'll make improvements and put these on the market. Okay guys, I'm telling you, it's tough times here, tough times. My lake is not working for me at all. And uh, that's very frustrating. So that means I'll be on the road next week with luck. The weather's gonna be fine, no luck there. It's gonna be better than it is right now. And uh, just gotta get gas in the tank and get on down the road to Possum Kingdom Lake. Thanks for watching guys, like and subscribe. As always, make, make some suggestions, some comments, and let me know what you think about what's going on here at the Texas Flycaster World Headquarters, located in North Central Texas. There's a lot of good stories coming out on the website about stocking fish, so be sure you go to the website, texasflycaster.com, check my written stories out, because it's going to be some stuff that you won't believe about how fish are stocked around Texas freshwater. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you next time.